Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Hamish Hawthorne. I'm the CEO of ATP Innovations. It's my great pleasure to be your MC for this evening and to welcome you all here to hear and see some amazing researchers, to hear and see their passion, their enthusiasm, and to hear and see the future of the New South Wales medical device industry. But before we kick off proceedings, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and I want to pay my respects to their elders past and present. So this has been quite a journey for us here at ATP Innovations. It was a desire to see the growth and development of the New South Wales medical device industry that really started this journey. This journey of providing the opportunity to do 12 bright, enthusiastic, inspiring early career medical device researchers and take them through a journey of understanding the process of commercialization, understanding how they might take their ideas and turn them into products, into, into solutions for the, the people, the population, the, the, their customers. And so over this uh, past three months, it's been inspiring to see each of the participants develop as entrepreneurs. And I'll say that word a couple more times. You know, we've seen these amazing people develop as entrepreneurs. And I think that if, if something that I observed over the course of the program was just this transition of people who are outstanding researchers, the, the really the, outsta the cream of the crop here in New South Wales, make that transition into outstanding entrepreneurs. And I think that is really the essence of what we have been able to achieve over the past three months. And uh, it will be amazing to see each of those amazing entrepreneurs come up here and present to you uh, their, their, their business ideas, their technologies, their research, and give you an insight into where they might go to, and I guess give us an insight into what the future of the New South Wales medical device industry really represents. So without any further ado, I would like to welcome the Honourable Gillian Skinner, without whom none of this would have been possible. Uh, as the Minister for Health and Minister for Medical Research, she has clearly and repeatedly demonstrated materially her support for this industry. And I'd like her to uh, come up and say a few words. Thank you very much, Hamish. May I start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land upon which we meet and pay my respect to elders past and present. And in case you're wondering why I did it, that there are steps back there. Would have been better than seeing me fall on my face down here. Look, I'm really thrilled to be here uh, at ATP, um, Hamish. Thank you so much for having us here, us here and also for your involvement and, and the involvement of Ben and others in this project and also um, Tony Penner, Anne O'Neill and everybody from the Office of Health and Medical Research. Uh, to all of you distinguished guests, to everybody who has helped our participants and to those who've participated in this program, I think this is one of the most exciting programs that um, I have had anything to do with as Minister for Health or Minister for Medical Research. And so I'm really delighted to be here this evening to congratulate the very first graduates of the Medical Device Commercialisation Training Program. Uh, you should perhaps uh, benefit from understanding where I come from on this. Um, I'm the first medical research minister in New South Wales. Um, and one of the things that I was very keen to do was to encourage greater involvement of uh, researchers in the medical device field. I'd had a long association with cochlear, all my political life, in fact, and I have seen cochlear implants turned on. I've um, had a lot to do with them. I've funded a number of cochlear implantations because I've seen the tremendous success of that device in what it does for patients, you know, it transforms the lives of people. And I know from my work over many years in opposition that New South Wales is a home of devices, but unfortunately we've got so many brilliant people doing work here, but they have to, they disappear, they don't go any further. So when I became the minister, I, the, I have a small ministerial contingency fund. It was double what it is now. What I did the very first day was halve it, 
and put it into the medical devices fund because I wanted to have this very small amount of money each year to develop a project that um, provided grants to really great medical devices and it's been absolutely inspiring to me and to those who've uh, been involved in selecting the projects to see how it's gone. This medical devices commercialisation training program is an extension of that uh, and I'll talk a bit later on about how it all came into place but it's a unique career opportunity um, that fulfills a commitment I made to build the medical device commercialisation capacity in New South Wales. As I said, New South Wales is the home of um, medical devices with more than half of Australia's $10 billion medical de technology industry in this state. Globally, the medical technology market is growing at an estimated 7% each year. And I wanted to capitalise on this growth, so the government uh, is increasing its role in this uh, space and, uh, as, uh, as I said, as, a minister, as the First Minister for Medical Research, it's also my great passion because I believe um, the power of research is in delivering life-saving, life-changing benefits to individuals and to the communities. I think that research and innovations of today really will become the medical solutions of tomorrow. New quality medical devices have the potential to transform the delivery of healthcare and to deliver greater comfort and life-saving benefit to patients. The government realises that giving people, the people behind these new devices a helping hand will soon see benefits realised, will see benefits realised sooner. We're doing a lot in New South Wales to build capacity in health and medical research. The role of the Medical Device Commercialisation Training Program is contributing to this capacity. The training program bridges the gap between our talented researchers and the commercialisation needed to treat, bring treatment solutions to patients. Uh, born from lessons learned during the first two rounds of the Medical Devices Fund, this training contributes to the discovery and application of new treatments and diagnostic techniques to improve patient outcomes. This first intake of candidates has been exceptional, I'm told. I've met a few, but I'm told that you've all been absolutely exceptional. And the quality of the projects you have been working on and the enthusiasm that you've all brought to the training is outstanding. But the journey is not over, all of you are now well placed to take full advantage of the commercialisation opportunities available to you. Whether it's applying for the next round of the Medical Devices Fund, which will open this month, or, or when dealing with potential investors, you now have an entrepreneurial edge that will help you stand out from the crowd. And I'm sure that there will be many contacts that you've made through this process as well that can help you on the way. So. Um, with that, I think my role now is to pre present your graduation certificates. Okay, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you each of the participants of the first intake of the Medical Devices Commercialisation Training Program. So I'd like to invite up Ilana Fain, Paul Keel, Sheridan Go, Michael Weaver, Riley Green, Ali Fati, Simon Bone, uh, Evelyn Lenardi, uh, Nikki Batolo, Bakul Gupta, Ryan Powell. Damien Conway, Linda Varady, Alexander Baum, uh, Kailun Chow, uh, Roya Ravarian, Fasane Amandi, Paul Breen, and finally, uh, Gaetano Garulio. Now, thank you, Minister, that was wonderful.